nothing can improve the sound of an instrument better than replacing old strings with new strings. In the case of professionals, we usually replace them at least twice a year. Uh, in the case of students, I would think every two years at the minimum. Sometimes students come to me with, you know, cellos that they've had in their family for who knows how long and they have no idea when the strings were last changed. And so uh, then we put new strings on and it's like, oh, it's so much better. So I have my cello on its back here on a blanket. Normally when I change strings, I actually have it standing up and I'm sitting on a chair. But this is a little easier to demonstrate and also I think it's maybe easier if you haven't done it a lot. When we change strings, we want to do them one at a time. And the reason for that is that this sound post that we've talked about a couple of times that's in here is, is not glued in place. And it is, um, oftentimes it's tight enough so that it won't fall over if the instrument is released of all tension, but sometimes it will fall over and then you're kind of stuck and then you need to get a luthier to put it back in place. So instead of risking that, I just change one string at a time and then there's not a problem. Okay, so now what I'm going to do, I don't actually have a new string here because these strings are actually pretty new. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my current G string off here and we're going to put it back on. So let's pretend that there's a, a little wrapper that I took this out of and oh, I've got a new string here. Great. Okay, so um, the first thing we want to do is we want to lubricate these grooves because what will happen is when we tune the cello, it, the, the bridge will tend to pull further and further in this direction and then sometimes the bridge bends. And so we don't want that to happen. We want the strings to glide smoothly over uh, through both grooves. So here we are. We're going to use a pencil and put some graphite in the groove on the nut and now we're going to do the same thing on the bridge with a pencil. So these, these should be nice and slippery and the string should flow through that pretty nicely. Now starting to, um, it, as I showed um, before and you can see this here, there's always a hole in the peg and what we're going to do is we're going to put the string through that hole um, obviously when it's in the peg box. So uh, I'm going to start by doing that. Now I don't want to put it too far through the hole, maybe a quarter of an inch, and then I'm going to wind around like this. And uh, I'm going to try to roll over the previous winding when I start, and eventually I want the winding to end up near the edge of the peg box. In the case of these two, pegs, that would be this side, and in the case of these two pegs, it would be this side. So in other words, I'm going to sort of wind like that, try and lead it in that direction. And then when it's getting so that uh, the part that's, that's colored is getting into the um, peg box area, then I'm going to uh, attach this side to the fine tuner at this end, okay, if I can. Sometimes these strings are a little fat for those fine tuners. Okay, and then I pull on this so I get it in that groove and it's under a little bit of tension and I continue to turn this. And now I'm a, we always turn this way instead of underneath. I'm not quite sure why, but I think that, I think underneath would cause too sharp an angle to the, to the pegs. So, um, so I'm, I'm in, position on both the bridge and in the nut and I've got the winding near the edge of the peg box and that's in good shape. So great. So that's how you change a string. And you just do that four times for the A, D, G, and C. Now the position of or the peg associated with the A string is always going to be this peg. And the peg associated with the D string, this peg, G, C. I've seen some people change around the G and the C, but um, the C strings are usually a little shorter, and so you'll, you'll, wanna, you'll wanna do it like this. So A, D, G, C. Okay, now um, 
when you've changed all four strings, chances are, just even if you've lubricated the bridge and everything, and you've tuned them up, chances are the bridge is going to have leaned over a little bit. Now, this bridge is actually really straight right now, so this isn't the clearest demonstration, but there is a little bit of, there is a little bit of lean going this way. And so what I'm gonna do is I come around to this side of the cello and, excuse me, I put my elbows on the cello and pull, pull the bridge back just a little bit to make sure that it's perpendicular. And that works out really well. So nobody got hurt and we got a perpendicular bridge and it's all tuned. So that's how you change strings, it's something you should do. And if, <laughs> if you don't know when you last changed them, it's time to change them.